undying. But not against Doomlina. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess they do have a, too much damage. But you have so many strength like, heroes. Because like, right, right now, TNC have one Doom target, and that's like the Oracle. You don't... You're not going to get the chance to Doom Earthshaker or Batrider, really, because they're fog. Enough, they right. are fog heroes. And right. you, you do give him a Doom target, okay? But what hero do you get that doesn't isn't susceptible to the Doom here? Because you need a m mid laner, so what? DK? Shadow Fin, you can. And you can Doom Shadow Fin, but if you go through the Greaves, Greaves build yeah. and he's got uh, Necro Mastery just to stand his ground and punch through best he can. You go for the the pango and just roll in thunder in. If you talk, tank the doom, you walk out. What about Sniper? Okay, yeah, we actually didn't mention Razor, but Razor's actually pretty legitimate here. Oh, we've been forgetting Razor because we've seen it once. Like, it's, yeah. it's been banned maybe twice out of the, like, ten games we've cast. Picked once or twice, maybe? It's been left out and ignored the majority of, uh, of this group stage, honestly. We've mentioned it, like, a million times, like, oh, look, they've got a life stealer. The Razor's still in the pool. And then you say that like three times in a row and you think it didn't happen three times, so we'll stop mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> but this time the Razor's a really good pickup, though. We're talking about someone that's not really suitable to the Doom. That's Razor, for sure. You don't really care if you get Doomed, as long as you static link before that. The Grimstock is an easy kill for the Razor. Lena does... I, mean, I don't know if you win the lane. I think the lane's relatively even between Lena and Razor. It depends a lot on positioning and how much damage you can get Dragon Slaves out of. Meanwhile, Razor against Life Threat, as you mentioned, is super, super powerful. And Razor is an edge carry, so you do get a bit of attack speed to deal with an undying tombstone. So you, it's a bit of everything. The combo as well, Razor is one of those agility heroes that also builds, in general, HP. Or can build HP, or likes Lots to build tanky. Stats. Yeah, exactly. But in general, he's a hero that he has a really good strength gain, actually. One of the best ones, except for Arcor, and I think it's Venger Bloodseeker that are close to him, in terms of strength. So you actually do tank up quite a lot, which means Lena Laguna played on Razor, not the best thing, right? If you get a double Doom here and your Doom targets are what, Oracle and Razor, that's not going to be with a Grimstroke ultimate. If they're near each other enough for the, the Soulbind to work, that's yeah. because you're misplaying there. Razor's always going to be the one leading the charge, and we're, together with Wraith King. Yeah, for this dire team, it's very much going to be take what you can get in the first 20 minutes. Buy time for the life stealer. Try it. So, the main... The main thing, team fight wise and overall game sense wise, is Soulbind and Doom and Laguna Blade need to land. They need to get kills in the first 20 minutes and rack up kills on that Lena because Lena's item progression. Yeah, it is one of the one of the most difficult to synchronize with the rest of your team because if you get ever so slightly delayed, you lose out on timings with her kill power around Laguna Blade. You know, if if your Yules gets delayed or your Shadow Blade or your Ethel Ends, whatever your primary item is. Gets delayed by a guardian grief. Yeah, I mean that, that's the thing. We saw Moon, no, Moon do that. No, no, I don't think it's the best. No, 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 no please, like, but the, the reasoning he went. Yeah, well, well, one second, guys. I would love to discuss the game with you, but no, 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 no. So yeah, we saw Moon playing Lena the other day, and he got Etherlands, and then had to go back into Greaves because a his team didn't have a Greaves carrier, but also b he died three times in a row and couldn't progress after Yules into the uh, sorry after Etherlands into Yules or Shadowblade or Aghanims, and he kind of had to go for a defensive item, which had to be the Greaves, and it's often a problem that Lena's have breaching or kind of bridging that gap between you know 15 minutes in the game to 25 minutes. Yeah, because it's true. You, because yes, you can shove waves. Yes, you can farm jungle. But that's not what Lena is built to do. Lena's, you know, a that's hero that, that goes and kills. Yeah, that goes great. into a lane and slays people. I mean, that's why back in the day when Odin started playing Lena carry and you went straight Shadowblade because you don't even care that you also just want him to get the kills and Shadowblade is enough of a setup to get the light strike array. If you're, you know, good at guessing, uh, that's and that's when the shadow blade started getting played on Lena. I, I like the suggestions you're making. I think the Yosuter shadow blade is the the best idea. I think in this game though, an Ethelens Lena would be quite particularly strong. Yes. You know, with a magic Yosef, damage build, maybe Ethelens Yoseptor into an Ags because Razor gets decimated by that. Like he does not deal well with that, especially when you can hit from afar. And you also evade the potential Earthshaker initiation, which we we're discussing about a lot. There's no way Batrider or Earthshaker is getting close to an Etherlands Lena with a cast range down. She just hits from so, so far away. And I want them to commit completely to the magic damage build. No, this half-assed thing where halfway through you go for the Fire Soul. I want to see the six-second Dragon Slave cooldown, <laughs> the 14% spell amplification. Yeah. I love that hero. Go all in on it. Man, when I first saw that build, I was so, so chuffed. It's not playing... It's like a tri lane from TNC. Catching out the Undying Winter, not able to stamp his mark on this lane along with the Doom just yet. 
So what, what does that mean? Bottom lane is the Grimstroke and the Life Stealer against the Bat Rider, 2v1. But top lane, actually, Fisher Block into Wraith Fire Blast. They're chasing Velo. Devour level 1, he's got a decent amount of HP regen with a Tango going, 13.2 per second. And Winter will keep them at bay for now. Thank God there's a Winter here, actually. I think you can actually... Not a Winter, sorry, no, I'm dying. Thank God you can... I think you can leave the Life Stealer alone against the Bat right now. He shouldn't be too afraid of this lane. Maybe early on when Rage Cooldown is still quite high and doesn't have too much duration. But afterwards you should definitely rotate. Velo could be in trouble again. This time the root is for a full two seconds. Devour is helping a lot. He also has a Tango on him. But the lack of armor in this doom is showing as the damage is sufficient. What a nice little juke there, but Velo might still be going down. He wants to get the kill, and he will get it with a fortune for him. First blood for him, and Wraith Fire Blast for Winter. Unfortunately, though, again, going against the wind, uh, against an Undying is a bit more difficult because of that decay. Punching away at AU. Does have to be wary of Tim's here with a stick charge and a clarity going. Fisher will be back up in a matter of seconds. The clarity with a decay, fortunes end there on the Undying, and Tims with this enchant into Fisher does have a big right click to throw in, but Winter's tanky. He's got a He's mango a and another enough. decay. One more hit, decay is there onto two, oh, I believe. Fortunes the fortunes end. end will finish him off. You know something I think that uh, they really should, they're so powerful on Oracle, actually, no. Wait until they kill Velo first, devour for the extra healing, now they actually rotate Grimstroke, they need to leave the life to alone. Tims could be in trouble, he's gonna go down to that tower, but Doom is in the middle of Hellfire and Cuckoo will get that kill. The tower might finish off Cuckoo into the fire. very fire. He goes down at the right exact position to start healing him up, but a nice snipe by Polison, who ensures that Cuckoo will pay for his sins. But hang on, did Cuckoo drop the tree there, right? Am, am I making... No, no, he, he dropped... No, I think he broke a tree as he was going down. I don't think he dropped I, I mean, a tree. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Okay. I thought I, I saw I him like place a branch and kill it with Firefly so he couldn't tango it. If he, if he was able to tango it, that would have been nice. Uh, nice I'm not sure. To maybe keep him alive. To me, what it seemed like is that he was going down as he was going over a tree, so then it, the tree destroyed. Oh, no, it was in between the, the tier one and the trees. Like Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, what I was talking about earlier is that Fortune's End, 120 damage without any charging, by the way, because you don't need to charge yeah. the damage. That's absurd. That's why Oracle is so strong. Like, everyone talks about Purifying Flames. Yeah, it's good. But at level 1, you have a, a nuke that's 120 damage on, two, on a 15 second cooldown with a root and a dispel added to it. Please. Mid lane, Fisher, does it block? Looks like there's a gap. Nothing to say. Holds the ramp. Turns to fight into Armel as well with the. Can he? Can he? Let's say there, he's just punching away at this Razor. Just punching away at this Razor, turns to fight the Fairy the Fire there, the balance back though as Tim's will claim that kill. Wow, that was really uh, surprising by nothing to say. I didn't think he could get that kill on the Razor, but he stood his ground, and I think that was the best play anyway, because otherwise Razor could just chase him and kill him, so... Also, he gets the experience out of that kill, you don't care that Tim's is getting a bit of experience and gold there, nothing to say is much happier with winning the mid lane matchup. I think that's overall a pretty good play. Especially because he now goes back to base, gets full mana, and mana is so much more relevant on Lina than Razor. I mean, you want a static link, but Lina has to spam that Dragon Slave. Feels decent for Lina, for sure. <laughs> is that a variation of the feels good? It's like, yeah, okay. Feels decent. Feels all right, man. But, Thomas Gal is doing a good job in these lanes for now. Like, they're not losing the mid lane, which is important against a Razor. The Lina might have her impact. She did go for a double, no Talisman, now straight into bottle. And the life dealer is lasting quite well, staying very close to the Wraith King. Okay, this Oracle. Interesting, AU does as much damage as he can. Velo chasing after him with a Scorch Dirt. Two points of Scorch Dirt already. Quite fast. AU might be. He's quite fast as well. This Oracle, Jesus Christ, he's just hovering away. He's got four sticks as well, unlikely. They both have boots, but does, even with a Scorch Dirt. It does give modes movement speed. Okay, what? How is this Oracle such a speedy? I guess Doom is just very slow now. Ever since the nerfs to his movement speed. It's the sad state of affairs. I mean, it's not. He gets picked every game, right? Uncharacteristic miss out on that Fisher from Tim's. It was. Bounty room spawning as Tim's goes to grab one under the nose of Velo. Double top or MYSGAU. Miss Gal. That's what they contract their name to. I like Pal Mescal though. I was really enjoying it. It's just stuck with me. It's better than Power of MSG, so I, I'll take that. Pow! Yeah, Pal Mescal. Sounds like the you know the Batman, the old school Batman noises. Yeah, yeah exactly. Pow! Mescal! Mescal! Oh dear, we are morons. <laughs> Pal Mescal. Pal Mescal. Pal Mescal. Pal Mescal. Pal Mescal. They're trying to kill his Doom and set up for him again, but I, I don't see how they kill Velo with that. 
bonus armor from the Wild Wing now under that tier one. Six armor for the Doom. Even with AU and Tims here, it's a difficult kill to grab, but they've got Skelly Bros coming through with a catapult wave. So they aim to pressure the tower and not necessarily find the grab on to Velo. Stroke of Fate, good amount of damage through the skeletons, like you were mentioning earlier. Uncontrollable skellies means easy setup for that big nuke on Pelosan as they TP down the Undying now. Doom oh, walk good to into the middle of them all. Devours the catapult. Yep. Moves forward with the ink swell. He's not speedy enough to catch the four heroes of Miss Gow down into that bottom lane. Does open up the map for the Razor and the Bat Rider, but it alleviates the pressure on that tier one. So as soon as that tower dies, TNC shift up top and they pressure the life stealer, which is a problem. Kingdom wasn't quite able to take advantage of that arcane rune. He was going down there trying to get some kills using Laguna play with arcane rune. Unfortunately, not the case. And TNC now could turn this around. Tim's is behind the doom, so he has a good fissure block if he wants to. However, there's no follow up right now. Gabby's just calmly farming. He's and the skeletons back up. A six minute mark. I guess it's a seven minute minus this time. For Gabby. For Gabby. Wow, that's actually really, really speedy. I mean, I know he, he skips the boots and everything, but still. Like, he has Stout Julia, has Magic Stick, he's not doing badly. And I think the Maya is actually quite important for uh, Wraithing. People forget that he needs the Skeletons very clearly, and Minus does give you the Skeletons, right? God, we've cast so many games. Who played the Lifestealer earlier? It was MP. It was MP with a yeah. five-minute Midas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Thank yeah. you. We've had some pretty speedy hands of Midas. We have. More Skeletons. The, the Doom is just tired. He doesn't even bother with them. Inkswell, though, does help out. Nice to spell. The, the good thing about, or I guess the the Wraith Fire Blast directing your skeleton sometimes actually stops you from pushing. Because you want to stun a hero, right? But you, the skeletons can't keep doing damage to the tower. So for example here, I don't think he wanted the skeletons to hit the Doom. He's okay with just tanking the damage. So Vel just needs to be annoying and tank a Wraith Fire Blast. Good play. And now we're the typical saving the point Gabby has. Your, your hand's always itching wanting to get that point, but you know, you gotta save the reincarnation. And we'll see how quickly, we saw a quick Midas. He's going to go face boots afterwards, and we'll see how quickly he can get that Radiance, and how that compares to the Life Stealer timing, who's quite behind on the Midas, but he does get a face boot before it, so... In terms of net worth, he's actually beating the Wraith King. Let's see if this will make a difference. Just updating the stream title. Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I got you. People in Twitch chat reminded me. <laughs> I forgot as well. We're just human, guys. Okay. Twitch chat, they're on the ball 24-7. They know what's up. You guys are the best. You make us laugh. You make us update titles. Make us cry. Most That's cry. okay, too. Yeah. Emotions are human. Don't forget. And so okay. We are that. We are human. Just okay to be fun. sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be happy. Don't worry, guys. It's just not okay to be salty. Not okay to be a life stealer with no Midas at nine minutes. He did go for the phase boot. <laughs> Oh, the... that's a dead Oracle. Good job looking at Laguna Blade before Fate Seed came out. It was close, though. It was very close. So you could see the Oracle thinking, oh, no. Nope, I'm dead here. He even a Magic Stick as well, so he was not expecting that the Lena could get Laguna Blade off, because he would have just used that and maybe, maybe survived. So yeah, Life Stealer had to go for the Phase Boots because he's against the Bat. You know, Stick plus Phase yep. means that with the Rage, he's able to not only escape from the Napalm, but also turn and potentially look for kills. Whereas the Wraith King, you know, fully just free farming, gets the Midas much, much faster. Yeah, the, I don't mind the Midas and Life Stealer if you're already leading, or being a bit late if you're already leading by this much. And yes, it's unfortunate that once you get the face boots, you only relegate to farming, but it's also partially the reason. Nobody wants to face this Life Stealer with face boots. So you have a lane that's essentially his, because he's such a strong early game carry. So you have to let him go. He has a Midas now. It's not the bad timing anyway. And Gabby down bottom, finally maxing that Moral Strike, which, me which means Max Skellies. Crit's nice as well, but it's really the Max Skellies that you care about. It really is. Where are they playing into now? TP mid? Yeah, defending Velo as he did get gone on a little bit by Armel and AU. Tier 1 will take a bit of a... Oh, maybe not. No, no damage. Okay, he drags the creep wave back very nicely. I love that he can't last it because of the razor. <laughs> the big static link. Using the Sata Blast to CS feels good, man. So what's... Uh, okay, what's the build on Armel? This is the ideal build. This is the I've had an easy lane build and I can win. Which you go two point static link so you can deal some damage or annoy in the lane and in the mid game, and then you have the unstable current. He does not win net worth though, with Lena dominating in terms of last hits, probably because she is she went jungle a lot, she has actually started rotating properly. 
which Razor has a bit more difficulty. He needs that level 10. That 15 agility bonus is such a huge advantage for a Razor. So once you get the level 10, you can actually push towers. You can actually fight with a static link, you know, being your main source of damage. But until then, you're gonna have to be relegated to a, uh, a bit of a lane dominator. Gabby being hounded by Polosin's Grimstroke back in that jungle. No, oh, sorry, that's not Gabby. <laughs> Does get forced away, and they pressure that bottom tier one. Lena Lifestealer closing in on level 10s themselves, and Is also the... GPing top to defend. That's the taunt on, like, on the Wraith King. Yeah. Jesus Christ. There's the dance. What is that dance? Is that... It's, the, just, it's the Wraith King dance. Oh my god, that should be a meme. Have you never seen this before? Are we Fortnite now? Yep. The way we did this before Fortnite. Fuck Fortnite. <laughs> sorry, I swore. I'm sorry, chat. Don't, okay. don't please don't fire me. As long as you don't say the I, real the real F word I've in Dota, I don't mind. I've been such a good boy. What feed? Oh shh. Yeah, don't fucking swear. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> Oopsie. It's the small ball but there. Right, that's our quota of swearing. We're not yep. allowed to swear for the rest of the broadcast as we get a Wraith Fire Blast up at the top lane. It's all bind onto Wraith King. We'll do absolutely nothing. A tombstone from Undying. Oh, that's so they connect bind. onto the Oracle now with a two silences. Phantom Embrace with a good three-man Fisher blocks off the advance of this dire team. Ixwell connecting with the Oracle. Nice but he got off the Fates Edict. Well, you're right, just in time. It leads into the False Promise as AU keeps himself alive. And now the rest of the cavalry come in and charge forward to find the Lena. Maybe follow through for more. Static Link onto the Doom, the Wraith Fire Blast holds him in place, the Critical Stroke pops the Shrine, but it's all too little too late, they do not collapse around that Oracle in time. The Dire team, without their life stealer, tried to fight 4 versus 5, but they will in the end lose the battle, lose the Warding War as the Triple Observer gives a vision for the Radiant to push forward towards the Tier 1 even more. So because I think because they lost the Warding War, they were also, you know, a bit, a TNC knew. Uh, they had the chance there to to fight. They had much more vision there. They also got a pretty nice fate six, and the Oracle allowed you to still keep the false promise up. Kuko already has uh, travel boots, by the way, so yeah. he's doing quite well for himself. And this is back to what you were saying earlier: the Lina needing to impact now. And unfortunately, if you can't find the impact, you feel like a useless hero for a while. Sure, you're very farmed. But what do you do? You know, you're supposed to create space for the life dealer, but you can't really fight four versus five because Wraith King is already online. He might not deal the most damage, but his skellies are enough right now to be impactful here. And the map just keeps getting smaller and smaller here for the yep. Dire team. You know, Lifesteal gets that bottom lane for free, but that's a, that's, a, that's a gimme for the Dire team, especially with something like Rage and only Lasso being able to cancel out any kind of Rage TP. But we come back to my, my potential fear for the Dire team. The Lina is doing very well. Second in the net worth, 6,200. She yep. hasn't stuttered. There is, there is no halting her farm or her progression uh, as of yet. But this is the most important time of the game for her. She has the Arcanes, the Yules, the Double Null, the Bottle. She is ready, as soon as she gets that level 2 ultimate, that Laguna Blade, to really start playing with the Grimstroke and the Doom and forcing fights. They might actually look to do it a little bit sooner here, with Winter and Velo both smoking, looking to try and connect down in the bottom half of the map. But I don't think they can take their Lena with them. They, they need this Tier 1 mid. Again, it comes down to Tier 1 takes in the mid lane. The Yules up. LSA will connect. Armel will have the backup of the Oracle, the Soulbind there. Razor, double doom, and nice. the Laguna Blade blows up the Razor and will finish off Oracle in the back. This is perfect. Remember how we said you're never going to get the, the Grimstroke Soulbind on the Doom and the Oracle because your positioning will be good enough? Well, there it is. It's happened twice as well where the mispositioning there by the Oracle, he actually joins in. The Soulbind was only on one person. As you can tell by the fact that the Ghost came out of it too early and only stunned that Razor, or signs that Razor. So a bit of a misplay by TNC. They have to be much more wary of their positioning, especially the Oracle. Your range is not that great, so you have to be a bit closer to the to your teammates to actually get your false promise out, but not close enough that Soulbind can catch you. So yeah. It's, it, it's a very difficult way to play Oracle. It's not the typical Oracle you're playing, but if you don't take this into account, this will happen constantly by Miss Gal. So we'll see. And for now, Miss Gal does get a really nice... <laughs> We're calling them Miss Gal and I can't. It sounds so bad. I keep thinking you're saying Mescal or something. <laughs> Is that because I'm Spanish? And yes. Think I'm tequila. Ooh, Ooh. Arriba, arriba. Okay. The, um, Glad you did that. Not me. Yeah, yeah. Not really <laughs> I, to it. So I would have to delete my Twitter account <laughs> if I did anything like that. Right. Dear Lord. But Miss Gal are doing a, a good job right now of actually taking advantage and of the space they created early. Managed to get the life stealer not to participate in these team fights. And honestly, using the Doom and Grimstroke. I mean, the Grimstroke has been played wonderfully. Paulson yeah. has been a wonderful Grimstroke this game, True. which has allowed. 
I like this triangle you're drawing here because this is the triangle they're controlling right now. Yeah, triple ob sword around the mid lane. They get the tier one. Life Dealer yep. has he's got this one aggressive ward bottom, so it cuts a nice portion of the map for him to kind of play uh, between the triple camp and the triple camp down here. So he's got that entire box of the map to just keep farming towards the relic, which he's 300 gold away from now. And the rest of his team can play in that middle portion of the map. You can see lines being drawn right now in those exact places because they have the great wall of wards, deep wards now, watching the maneuvers potentially from TNC, but TNC knows knows how to walk around wards. They've got themselves a smoke, and they are pushing Dyer's forward. Who can they catch, though? Lena is out in the Dyer's open here, potentially farming creeps, and dying, trying to tank the gank and break the smoke, but there we go. Lena caught, blink echo. They catch out the most important kill on the map. And Tim shows off his shiny new dagger. Yeah, that's another good dagger review. He's been on point with those dagger reveals, by the way, which is something that other, the, the lesser teams, these qualifiers, have not been able to do that as well. Which is, uh, take into account that reveal can has to mean something. And you get the Lena with it, it's fantastic. She is going for the magic damage build, which we were suggesting earlier, so thank God. Yep. We go for Ag Zephyr. Yep. I like that she went Yules first, though, for more kill potential. Usually you go Ether Lens first for a bit more farming, but... In this case, you want to get the space to Life Dealer. Life Dealer is not that far off Radiance, though, and actually, compared to Wraith King, he's he's ahead. Yeah. Despite the low, the later Midas. And they also have a Midas on the Doom being picked up now, so it looks like they are trying to scale into that later portion of the game. You know, not not late game per se, but definitely looking past 30 minutes. Now they've got this raise and Wraith King most certainly do fall off quite significantly as the game progresses. But we've got the Relic on Wraith King. He's honestly not far away from his own Radiance. Barely behind the Lifestealer. And the real big threat is this Lena still. I would like to see more smokes come out from the Dire team. If they can get themselves positioned aggressively again with this close and Grimstroke leading the charge, the Doom to follow, and the Lena to maybe come and pick up the pieces, they could start to look for these Tier 2s. What do you... What, what Radiance is more relevant here? Like, what team needs it more? I've been thinking about this. Both. <laughs> yeah, obviously, that's the... Uh, get off the fence. Oh, they're gonna get Paulus on here. That's actually quite big. I'm a fence main. I, I know you are a fence main. You're sitting there. You, you must be getting sore. Your legs are getting sleepy. So... I honestly... But I was thinking about this, honestly, because what does the mischance matter here? You have a, a Razor, I think, is actually quite affected by that Radiance mischance. It's quite annoying for him. I, I, I mean, Lifestealer has a built-in BKB, so you kind of automatically say him. Oh yeah, because he's he, much more. Yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't get affected by the Wraith King Radiance, right? That's very true. Uh, I was thinking Bat Blink, but he's you know 900 gold away from it, and Doom is also buying Blink, so that's kind of an equal you know Radiance canceling Blink situation between the two teams. But I guess the additional Earthshaker Blink means it's it's another you know tally mark in the Life Stealer Radiance box. His is more important overall, I think. So I'm going to get off the fence and say the VT faded getting this Radiance now is prime time for the Dire team to maybe even five-man maneuver. They're going to smoke as four from mid. Lions drawn through that Radiant jungle looking for Gabby. I agree. I think that I, I totally think the Lifestealer Radiance is much better here, and it also suits your evasion build, which is the build of Lifestealer, right? Can't hit me. He's going to go for Sanjay Yasha for now, it seems like, but that could easily turn into Heaven's Halberd if he feels so. Let's see. Gabby's the target. Okay. Be a problem for Gabby. He does have reincarnation though. Can they come into his aid in time? <sighs> no, they don't save him. They don't save him. Reincarnation has been wasted. And this guy wants to keep on fighting. That's the lasso. Actually finds the Lena. Lena brought back behind the enemy lines, but she does get the level of Luna's blade. Now you also have to make some of the damage. They actually do a lot of damage to Gabby before Lena dies, but nothing to say. We'll have nothing to say in the graveyard. And now the drums, the chase is on. Winter. Yeah. Nowhere to run. Ooh, Armel gets the final I kill in this team by making it a 3 for nil. TNC us. only lost the reincarnation there. And that's why you don't want to be using, you know, any spell really on this Gabby Wraith King. You don't want to be popping the Wraith King as the first hero you find because reincarnation, it is a pseudo team fight reset. It isn't a Naga Song, it isn't a Black Hole or a Ravage, but it buys time for the rest of your team to reset, rally around that one point on the map. The Ankh in the floor, the Tombstone of Gabby. And they do it beautifully. I'm not sure about that flag. I love... How do they get these flags? Like, my flag is just the hero flag, right? Uh, you get to a certain level and it turns into your profile picture. <laughs> what a wonderful... I know they do this on purpose. Oh. Anyway, with that team fight, TNC manages to... We were talking about Radiance on Life being a bit more impactful, but if you get a team fight like that, you know, that's wonderful. The batter has been super impactful. And now, Cuckoo is getting his Blink Dagger. Talking about the Tim's Blink Dagger reveal, Let's see the better Blink Dagger reveal how effective that can be. 
with with the trial boots and the drums is super difficult to catch him and you have nothing to actually cancel that bad rider lasso we were talking about this in the last pick you know the victim dying that's not gonna help yeah. you do we no yeah, but the Life Strike Array, if you're a god and you can actually predict that properly, you'll suffer, obviously, but that's it. And we see some of the struggles that Lena will be facing, right? Being dragged back, she's still incredibly squishy, doesn't have any real defensive tools outside of the self yules which isn't particularly reliable when you still have... Yeah, we saw it in that team fight, right? It was yeah. okay, but it just delays the inevitable. Yeah, exactly. But she put herself in a good position, so she does have a couple of deaths in the tank that she can expend, you know, mm -hmm. get out of jail free cards, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter as much as maybe it could have, because her item progression has been so damn good, and yep. swiftly moving in towards that Aghanim Scepter, looking pretty hot on this Lena still. Also, the fact that she's created so much space for the Life Stealer. You know, he's got his Yasha yeah. done now. I, I honestly feel like he should be fighting more. Yeah, they hit that Radiance timing pretty nicely, but they haven't grouped up as five yet. It looks like they will now. Doom has no blink until... Oh yeah, he's got 60 gold until blink. Oh, this timing is ever so slightly off. If Velo gets this blink dagger delivered in time to utilize this smoke, it could be perfect. Sorry. Where are they smoking to? TNC, hold ramps, hold high grounds. Yeah, they're waiting for that blink dagger. Look at that. They have to wait for it, I think. <laughs> and, I mean, you're going and for they've got a stomp. Right? This, is, this, is this is literally perfect. They have yep. blink wall stomp on Velo now. You can just walk in and use that radius for a bit as life throw comes out. He is... They just need to find someone, unfortunately, the dewarding. Or, I guess, fortunately for TNC, the dewarding and their safe lane has been on point. Look at all these sentries. You are not warding this place whatsoever. They are keeping that vision to themselves, and that's... Probably would save him for the smoke gank, right? The lack of vision right now on, t on Mescal is clear. Yep. And they can't really do much against them. Like, if they're willing to, if, if the Oracle is willing to remain poor and just waste all his gold on sentries, then you know, so be it. He has his urn. He's, he's six slotted as far as an Oracle is concerned. <laughs> but where are his obs and sentries? <laughs> it's true, it's true. He needs those. I saw Tim's placing one earlier. That's not allowed. Tim's is meant to buy items, not observers. <laughs> Is this an invis? Yeah, invis doom. With the life dealer still inside him. Is that the original infest? Yeah, it was the original infest. Well, that's a yikes, actually. Yeah, you wasted a lot of time with this life dealer, but maybe this could still turn into a gank. Bella goes in. Oh, he misses. That stun. Uh, giga yikes. But well, you did force the BKB on the razor. Silver lining. Still, still yikes. Good. Yeah, they lose the tower as well. And TNC get the full retreat. So all of that time really literally wasted by the dire side. They don't get pressure on the bottom lane, they don't get pressure on the mid lane, and they don't get kills on the top lane. They get literally nothing. As Lifestealer has spent a solid two minutes inside of the Doom. This is why the, the Lifestealer bomb is not so common anymore. Mm. Because this is one of the, the issues with it. If you don't manage to take advantage of it immediately, it's just not that useful. And Wraith King in the meantime managed to surpass the Lifestealer in farm by a considerable amount. Now 1400 difference. And Razor keeping oh, tabs. The lasso? Oh, it's only an undying. It's really not that big a deal, but they want to go for more. Gabby on the Grimstone, this could be a bit more important. They take out the Skeletons for now, and they come this back is, in. This is Roche. This is a Roche. You took the two supports out, and there's not much team fight in Mescal left. Okay. No contest. No way in. I mean, Agadim Scepter is now here for the Lena, but... Again, going back to the draft, whenever you pick Grimstroke, Doom, and Lena, you really do predicate the entirety of your team fight and your pickoff on that multi soul bind, multi Doom. I mean, she has Ag, so that multi Laguna is going to be yep. something else to witness. She also has a Life Striker 8 damage, so that's actually pretty big. Uh, adds a lot of damage to that combo now with a Dragon Slave Laguna Blade, and of course, the Ag is making it pure damage. Ideally, once you get to level 20, you, you got all you really need as a Lena. And there's another infest coming. This time it should be successful because they do know where the enemy team is to some degree, but they have to not miss that war stomp. Well, oh, oh, no? Okay. This is why you don't load a high ground smoke because everything dancing revealed you. And again, are you really going to waste this time with the life dealer a second time? Oh, Winter. Oh, Winter wants to deal the orbs, but Gabby says no. <laughs> no. <laughs> protecting that vision. TNC has been doing a really good job, though, of, the, of playing the vision game. They have been protecting their vision quite heavily. They've been always fighting around the wards if possible. And letting Gabby be the main core in the game. We're almost playing a 4 protect one with Gabby. 
letting Razor be much more of a bit of utility here. Though I do like that Armel is not going with um, the Yul's build. He's going for full damage. Sanjay and Yasha BKB. You need that against life. You can't rely just on the rating crits. TNC playing very tight, playing small map, not split pushing, not shoving out waves, making sure they kind of just platform off of this shrine, push out the mid and the top lane, allowing bottom to potentially reach the tier two. Batrider will go and remedy that, no problem whatsoever. So this now is the time to strike. The Dyer have set up bottom lane to push into tier two. The Doom can TP to either of the Dyer shrines, uh, but I really need to see this Dyer team push Midwave immediately and snap smoke towards the Northern Radiant Shrine as quickly as possible. As soon as they see that Batrider showing and Firefly down, they need to make a move, but they're yep. being too slow. They're moving bottom, which I think is, is a mistake here. Bat is never going to show himself long enough to be picked off. They're calming, they're, they're playing up this... They just want to take the tower. tower. Yeah, they want to take the tower, but... Well, TNC want to contest this. They could come from behind if they want to, if they see too many heroes here. For now, it's only Vela revealing himself. TNC has no vision in this area, and it is Miskal who has this super important ward. They see any rotations. Maybe it's just the Roshan cake. Gabi is pinging it. This is the thing. You come down bottom, you... I love how the skeletons are confused. Like, oh, should we go here? Okay. You remove yourself from the Roche pit. You take a tier two, yes, but you were too scared to commit for it. I think Miskal here just way too tentative with committing to objectives. Either you commit for the tier two bot, or you commit for a smoke towards the Roche pit, or you commit oh. for a gank near the shrine. Roshan still hasn't died in time. The tombstone is dropped, and Winter's in. But Gabby's the focus here in the drag bag. They've got the Doom. The Soul Blind onto two. But the Laguna Blade brings them low with a double Doom there as well. It looks good. Razor gets his BKB off. But what damage can he do against this Life Stealer who chases him down and hunts him out? Gabby looking for the Lena now, but a quick Ink Swell will buy him oh, time. Fissure. And a great continuation of this fight by the Dire side. The trouble is they are playing into a Blink Echo still on Tim's, holding, waiting and biding his time as the first life of the Wraith King will be forfeited. A decent trade for the Dire team. Roshan still up and running, wondering why all these kids are playing on his lawn. <laughs> and that was a the, the initiation we were talking about earlier, right? You don't get the double Doom, which, yeah. but you do get the double Laguna Blade, which is all you needed, really. As we can see by the Aghanims being super strong, and now we get the third level Laguna Blade very close to getting that 850 pure damage. So in total you have, what, 1700 damage in just one ability, right? With a relatively low cooldown. The Infester actually stopped the initiation, so maybe Batter will think twice again from trying to last for the Doom. It's a good target, but you never know if Life Stealer's inside of him. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to catch the Grim. Like, Grim or Lena. Like, yeah, Lina, Grim or Lena. Lena is probably ideal target because... Yeah, it's very difficult, though. Because if you go for the Grim, oh, wait. Lena can yule's up, right? It's true. Is Gabby not going to finish the ward? I don't know. Yes, there you will. go. Yeah. The skeletons are guarding him. Uh, the tombstone's actually a great way to deal with the skeleton, but unfortunately, it usually as I'm dying before, you just get level 15 and stop farming and no experience, but since Winter understands that he's never going to get to that level 20, which is his like, next relevant level, he's just, like, giving up. This is his game. He's literally level 9 forever. Look, his difference between him and Yoriko is three whole levels. Yeah, it's... But how do you get levels of undying if you are, you know, this not honoring your name and dying all the time? This is why you don't pick undying, you pick a bad one. <laughs> exactly. A bad one was actually available as well. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, cool. Oh, was it last ban? No, I think it was last ban. You're, you're right, you're right. It was the last ban. Because they were thinking the same as us. Yeah. The Roshan will fall to the Wraith King. And they go, though, with the Life Stealer bomb. They try to kill Tim's first. A fall from a saving his life from behind. A Wraith King tries to attack the Lena. And the Echo Sun keeps her in place. Tim's still fighting. Thanks to that false promise. Able to activate the BKB. He will pop, but who cares? He got the Lena with an Echo Slam. Armel finishing off the Loot Doom. And of course, Undying dying there as well. With Gabby taking him down. That is working wonders for TNC. What a play there by Tim's again. A playmaker for this team. Yep. Very important false promise. You don't get your perfect combo off as the Dire team, and you lose the team fight. Lifestealer, sure enough, is alive at the end of it, but he cannot stand his ground against Razor and the Wraith King, who absolutely are insufferable to deal with, as that melee core Nyx, who absolutely hates dealing with a Razor, who now holds an Aegis of the Immortal as well. So TNC will take the majority of this map as their own. Oh, oh, if they catch. Uh, he's, they know Rage is down. Oh, but Batrider is being spotted. There are two Observer Wars here, one Radiant, one Dire. So Lifestealer knows that Batrider Rider knows. Yeah. Nah, that's a bit of a tall order. I mean, if they catch Lifestealer there, that is oh, real for good for TNC. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's true. So he couldn't force that himself and grab it. Yeah. He had to use force that to cancel Lincoln's. Okay. That Lincoln's pickup is really good by the Lifestealer, by the way. Like, 
yes, there's a lot of ways to cancel it, mainly purifying flames being super easy. But Helena just uses the bat to steal a bounty rune. <laughs> I mean, it, it seems worth it. You're going for Lincoln's Alina as well. I, I, Lincoln's is the way to go here, unfortunately. There's a lot of ways to cancel on TNC, so it's not a be-all, end-all item. You have to go for your main core and then finally go for that Lincoln's. I like the idea of the Blink as well on Lina, because Blink does get the cast range talent and the cast range from the Ether Ends, right? So it's Blink forever. You can Blink anywhere in the map. Basically teleportation. <laughs> Why buy TP? You can buy Blink, Ether Lens, and cast range. It's just better. Velo? Nice glimmer cape there. Ooh, Paulson just styled all over Gabby. And Velo's forced to BKB TP, but Lasso will cancel it. Oh, that hurts so much. Your 10 second BKB wasted. Or maybe not. I mean, it was still wasted. And it will be completely wasted because your life will go. Same as your chances of using that 10 second BKB effectively. A little bit spooky there. That's really bad, they did, actually. They didn't get a right click in <laughs> while dragging the lasso doom towards the razor. Still, nice play by Tim's being able to blink over and fish a block. Yeah. The doom out. Dead for a solid 40 seconds. This is where TNC stamped their mark on the map. Bottom tier two in their sights. Should be able to clear out mid-wave as well. Yeah, Razor really setting up the kind of pincer movement towards the high ground. How long do they have Aegis for? Two minutes? Two minutes left on this Aegis for Razor. So high ground is a possibility here with level three reincarnation. BKB Wraith King, eight seconds duration. Eight on the Razor. Skeletons are coming. Where's the Grimstroke? Stroke the creeps, buddy. Stroke him good. You didn't hit the actual creep wave. You only got the skellies and they respawn. The real undyings. Well, we'll see. yeah, I mean, they, they, the skeletons, I think, in team fights have lasted longer than winter, so I don't think that's wrong to say. Oh dear. I mean, winter has just been uh, a punching bag, but now he's not even a good punching bag. Like, that's the punching bag that you find, you know, like Rocky, the one that's been punched for ages, and you can't buy a new one, and you kind of love it because your dad gave it to you and he died uh, in the army. Batrider in trouble. Oh, well, that's really bad. Unless Batrider you can has a haste force death. Wow, the, the forced in haste saves him completely there. Uh, Unless, uh, can they actually get a counter kill here? They see a TP, they can't cancel it. No, it's still fine. I was wondering the same, but it looks like Winter gets out, Velo sprints away. And now TNC, yeah, they go they go back to their nice little podium, their, the platform, the launch pad. <laughs> Look at uh, Armel as well now with the yeah. bat cave, whatever you want to call it. This is this is where they've got all these nice little... The bat cave put up, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the bat... The, the plateau. It's just, yeah, it's just... This is... This Pent house? Is, this is Scotland in a, in a... The bat hill. To the bat hill, the Robin! Bat hill. I like it. To okay. the bat hill. It's unfortunate, though, that it's not how... Palmas Gal, I guess, the bad hill. Yeah, real sad. Uh, I was going to talk about the Razor because he's getting a Shiva's as his next item, and I, I'm really liking that build. The kind of half utility, half damage Razor can still hurt the Lifestealer, but now with the Shiva's, has a bit more control, and obviously the extra armor is fantastic against Lifestealer in general. So, TNC, they know what they're doing. And I really want Miss Gal to come and play off of this ramp. Like, the, the four, uh, the four more. The four most important places, like outside of, you know, like Fountain, Roshan, um, and High Ground, I guess, are these are these plateaus, right? The, sh the shrine areas where you can play off ramps. But more you importantly... Yeah, but this is much more of an important plateau. I would yeah, yeah. The, 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 this, this one is... This, this, this one and the Radiant side, this one here, are the super important ones. Because yeah, this, this one. Because yeah. you can play into the double lanes. But if your Dire team and your, your opponents are on this Shrine Plateau with the double lane push potential, yep. you kind of need to come out of your base and play from here. Because if you play from your base, you can't catch anyone. You can't make kills. You're just stuck in a rut, shoving waves, shoving waves, shoving waves, waiting for your opponents to either commit or get the hell out. Yep. Whereas if you come out of your base and you smoke towards this plateau on the left-hand side, you can actually make picks, you can make plays off the back of it. Yep. So I kind of want to see them smoke right now and just go and go and make a play. Sometimes you need to propose, right, even when you're behind, but it's so difficult to make the decision. TNC preempted it. Oh, okay, TNC now. I said, Coast, I'm catching the Doom and the Life Dealer, but unfortunately, it's no follow up, and they both activate BKB in time. Which means Tim's is gone. That initiation was for not, but they do destroy the Tombstone in the process. Life Dealer's stranded. Now, Absolutely stranded. His team left him behind, and without help, Life Dealer will die alone. 90 seconds without him. He does not have buyback. A thousand gold away. This could mean at least one lane of racks. This is what separates, like, the excellent teams from the decent teams. 
the Dire team knew what they needed to do, but they did it 20 seconds late. Yep. So the entire process that I was explaining previously, TNC knew that was coming, they smoked and they preempted it. They got into a position where they cut them off to stop them getting to that plateau. Stop them getting to that ramp which they can hold and make picks and plays from. If Miscow had done that move, maybe 30 seconds earlier, they get there before TNC, they hold the ramps, and they get the initiation, they get the vision from the high ground, and they see the Filipinos coming. Unfortunately for them, TNC one step ahead. The Grand Masters now ready to push high ground. It was difficult to make that play when you're playing from behind. Though. There's yeah. that added pressure, right? It's not just that Miscow. But sometimes you just have to do the do. You've got I know, to make yeah. the move. That's sometimes maybe a bit risky. They are match defenders somewhat. They have a Grimstroke and a Lina, so they're... Their lane clear is pretty nice, however, the pushing is also quite nice by the ranking in Razor. Now Razor with a Satanic, by the way, did not go for that Shivas, instead more Thanos resistance. It's really hard to stun him out now. We see a bad guy that was trying to catch a surprise kill, it's a double duel with Laguna Blade. They kill the ranking the first time, but they need to kill him a second one, and Gabby's fine, he still has the BKB anyway. That's Miss Gao's forced to retreat, they already lost melee racks, so they got nothing out of that, but... It was only melee racks while your life theater was dead for 90 seconds. Could have been worse. Yeah. Could have been worse. <laughs> sure. Okay, I'm just playing the silver lining. For you, right? Devil's advocate. I, yeah. I, I'll respect um, you for that. It's usually my job, but I get to be negative Nancy today. You love that role. Oh, I love you it. You're relishing it. So good. <laughs> <laughs> life theater scores to level 25. That's two more seconds of rage, which is actually massive for these team fights as oh, well. They've got a Wraith King illusion as well for that radiance burn. So they're going to have multi lanes shoving in, and this should be able to secure them the entirety of the map. Interesting. As Roshan is respawning in... How long? I can't see because my thing's in German. Is it now? Is it immediate? It's now, it's it is literally five second respawn time. Holy oh. shit. Yeah, that was really quick. So now they can definitely, and they're taking the Roshan Shrine first. This is what a good team does, by the way. They take the Roshan Shrine before taking Roshan. A lot of teams forget about how useful this is. The thing is though, when you have Wraith King Illusions, you don't really... Think about going back to Scout Roshan, you're very much thinking about pushing lanes, shoving exactly. waves, you know, sends the Illusion's bottom to deal with that life stealer push, really nicely done, and then they can play off of this plateau like we were talking, they can make that move top and mid, with the vision they've got, looks like Wraith King will finally go and scout out Roche, second one of the game, Aegis and Cheese, and this is the back-breaking moment for the Dire team. Either they move now and contest Roshan, stop it from happening and fight in the pit, or they lose the game. Yep. And it is pretty big for TNC as well. This Roshan will should allow the Wraith King to reach level 25. That's the Wraith Fire Blast. I mean, now it's not only, uh, you know, not great to kill the Wraith King, but you're it's actually advised not to. Ideally, so difficult. And now you'll take the Roshan down and even give him... I mean, who's going to take the Aegis? You're not going to get the Wraith King, right? No, it's Razor. That's Wraith Fire Blast ready, or Reincarnation, which casts Wraith Fire Blast now. Razor is so damn tanky, you look at this. That's I mean, that's Blight Satanic. Satanic, Aegis, BKB, 3,000 health. Whew. Also, you also have uh, the BKB plus Thanos Resistance, right? From the Sanjay and Satanic, all the Thanos Resistance items, except for, obviously, the Aeon Disc. So, Razor is super hard to stun lock as well. It's just fantastic. The only bad side about this is that Doom deals more damage to you because of that weird bug, like, in the shorter time. But that's not really your concern. We have an Ags on Doom, interestingly enough. Try to take a crit off Wraith King. This means that Doom now on Wraith King is actually quite relevant. You can Doom him, and you can take away a large percentage of his damage. I can't imagine why else he would grab Ags. I guess you also want to push out some people in the team fight. Let's see if this works out for them. You have to push out these lanes for now. The Skellies are coming in first. And they grab an Undying. Okay, Winter's used to dying though. He's comfier when he's not playing. But that's a lane of Barracks now. No he's now playing coach. Dead for 30 seconds. He has no buyback. So okay. the rest of his team kind of has to commit to defend their buildings. And they're doing a good chunk of damage. Yeah, Gabby almost dies alone to the life too. That would be the ideal situation. The backstab right? smoke is coming. Polosin and Velo, they are making that swing around behind. But TNC have smoked. Dyrob's ward up on the high ground. Well, they break the, the smoke. Oh, he doesn't know, but... He they, no, they, he knows because he broke the, the bat smoke, so he must know there was some there. Tim's actually gets the initiation, but only on Pulson, and they missed that Soulbind, doing absolutely nothing with it. Only hitting Tim's. Tim's absolutely stopped this initiation, but now the team fight's become a bit chaotic. Oh, Doom and Pulson <laughs> come back and TP home. They TP home in the face of danger. This teleport. And that's Tim's Echo Slam down. That's honestly a sick play. Yes, they expect yeah. Soulbind, but they keep Doom, they keep Laguna Blade. And Soulbind's pretty low cooldown compared to the Echo Slam. It is. <laughs> that is some that worked out for them. comedic stuff right there. Alright, the Lincoln's working. That, he has double Lincoln's, this life dealer. Lena giving her own Lincoln's. 
acknowledging this life just cannot be taken away without potential lasso. And they're stopping the raid thing as much as they can, but he just, he, he's pretty much invulnerable. Open wounds again. Oh, that 4th doesn't work too much. And the Inks will annoy him, but his teammates helping out. There's a stomp from the Doom, and Razor's a much better target. But it's just so hard to keep him stunned. Look at that status just go. No more 1.5 second bash for you, or 2 second bash for you. I was like, LSA hits, and then I saw the raids walking, and I thought, did LSA miss? And it's just, no, he just doesn't get stunned for long at all. He even got bashed, and it lasted like 0 0.1 seconds. It is stupid. Ugh, funny stuff. It's what, one? I was right, it was 1.5 second bash, so that... How much damage does he have? Like, 26%? 41%! 41%! Oh yeah, Jesus you get, Christ! You get 25 from Satanic, right? So that's, that's almost having every single stun. So LSA, what? It, it's around 1.2 seconds. Basher is actually 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. We're playing Heroes of the Storm now. It's no longer done. This Razor... I don't, is, I don't understand that reference. Geez. Heroes of the... what? Man. Man. I was... I don't know, I didn't ever play that game, I just know that the stuns didn't last long, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah you keep telling me. Swear. I go Dota player. The Wraith King, stuck, there's LSA, and he doesn't have his tower resist, so they can actually permastun him with some lucky bashes and some good chain stunning. They've been doing a really good job of using the LSA being really their only stun. Oh, VT faded. The skeletons, okay. they baited him. He wanted the Midas to catapult, but the catapult's still going. And the skeletons are as well. They catch the Razor again. This time they keep us up for some time. The damage is pretty good, but Armel just keeps on shrugging off those stuns. If he didn't have both the Satanic and the Sanjay Yasha, he'd be dead by then. This is a lot of commitment for a second lane of barracks that is Some stuns been used there. Mega creeps. They still have a oh, soul blind. There's double hex. Pretty nice. Double doom as well. Double Laguna Blade. That's a perfect combo. Kill the Wraithing first, but that's not the first target you want to kill. Wraith Fire Blast Toss Initiation, and now they catch the Doom, he's all over Wraith to this Doom though. The Echo Slam from on! Not bad, now Life Fear's done! They should be able to finish him off, but he managed to get away just barely on low HP. <laughs> with a Soul Rib healing him 100 HP, who cares, Undying? Winter, stop trying to be useful. You're no longer in this game, man. It's okay. That Ag's Doom, look at it, it's still going on the Razor, oh, wow. by the way. Is he? No, he's, oh, he's he so he's close to... Oh, yes, it is. It's to come back up as well. I mean, yeah, he's going to lose his Aegis yeah. anyway soon. The, the thing is there, you soulbind the two cores, Wraith King and Razor. Sure, you get the Laguna Blade Doom onto both of them as well. Yeah. But Gabby doesn't care. He has that second life and BKB to come back up when he respawns. Whereas Armel has the False Promise behind him. So if you don't get the Oracle, you are not killing people with that combination. Yep. You need to catch the Oracle plus one. Like we've been saying, like Razor plus Oracle are the ideal heroes to catch. If not the Earthshaker to stop his. Blink Echo from coming through. But TNC is not going to let that happen again. Like, it happened a bit in the early game, and Soulbind is, the second target is random, right? You can only decide the first one, so you have to be really careful with, it's the closest target. It's not, like, completely random, but it, it, it really depends on the movement of the enemy here, not yours. Very similar to Winter's Curse, it's all about positioning for TNC. They're just going to front line with Wraith King and keep doing this. But they've been doing a really good job protecting these melee racks. Aegis. Even with the skeletons, look at them, they just destroy the skellies. Aegis does get reclaimed, which yeah. is now in the hands of Armel. But they know that Doom is down for a solid minute, so this is where they... Okay, they do the time to shrine, shine. That lasso is super important, they stem the soul rip. They didn't keep attacking this razor, that tombs are no longer relevant. Good luck, have fun. Yeah, this is difficult. They just lost their racks and they just can't do anything. They are unable to get those counter kills they're looking for. Even with the two seconds of rage, it doesn't matter, man. Lena needs a six second, second sleep cooldown. Man, they've lost two of their side lanes. They can now funnel in to defend the mid. But the false promise onto Razor though keeps him up and running. And they turn to battle. But VT faded as the double Lincolns. One from the leader, one for himself, so he does not get static link or stunned, rages and walks away. But this game becomes incredibly difficult for the Dyer to play from now. It does. TNC, they... It's, this is the hardest lane to take, right? Because you can't do the, the split pushing any, as much with the middle lane. And obviously you're going to defend this to the death. And Lina is really looking for a level 25. I joke around about a 6 second dragon safe cooldown, but it's amazing at being able to deal with those skeletons and the creeps coming to your lane. So. You and really, you have really no right click damage, so... And you don't care about it anyway. You don't care about the other thing. Attack range. I love it. It's just attack range. It's not even damage. It's like, well, why would I want to attack from further away if I don't want to attack him? I'm just looking at oh. the German names for Lena's talents. My goodness. I don't understand how they fit them, to be honest. In Spanish, some talents straight up don't fit and they just give up. And Same with Polish. Did you see that, like, a year just ago, go. the, 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 like, there was a patch which literally broke the game in Polish because every single text field... <laughs> yeah, it was too long, yeah. Yep.
happens often. You know, English is actually quite a sh uh, short language. It is. Every other language. <laughs> then you talk, have German, right? <laughs> Thai, Thai is like one of the ones that blows my mind. Are they very short? No, it's super long, oh. but yeah, it, it's it, it's an insanely difficult language to learn from what I've uh, from what I've heard and experienced. Sounds like a challenge. Good luck. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. It just sounds like a challenge. Uh. Alright, Gabby's quite happy. Look at this constant dancing. It seems like a cuckoo wants in. Who is he gonna grab? Oh, that's a nice oh. grab actually. Before Lincoln comes up. Oh wait, no, it's just an unknown. Take it back. They get the, the double doom. They get the double Laguna Blade as well. This time on batter, much more useful. And then what? Life steal. Life, Life steal. Wants to get the pad at least, but oh, he misses him. The night vision is actually playing against him here. Has the rage. Tries to kill Tim's, but Tim's is playing with him. He's been kind of to oblivion. Man, this life dealer had zero impact in like the doom. Four fights happening here. Razor has been healed up by the Oracle, kept alive with the False Promise. And the Purifying Flames, Razor is going to... Oh, the doom is going to be caught up. The doom gets caught. That's bad. 80 seconds, but he has buyback this time. Let's go buy up to buybacks. Actually, now when I look at buybacks, life dealer doesn't have buyback, so VT Fade has to be very careful here. Mm. He goes for False Promise and Invisibility. Interesting. Razor Satanics up top. Yeah, I, I mean, the invis there, if someone gets doomed, you just invis them and they walk yeah. away, right? Make sure they don't get that doom refreshed over and over. Oh yeah, I agree with it, I'm just saying. So, uh, bringing back the old false promise. Gabby, the target, there's the Infernal Blade, trying to deal as much damage as possible. He does have a second life here, Gabby, the false promise to actually use it on him, so it might be the chance to actually kill someone for the court. But then they catch Bello with a beautiful la lasso, which stops Bello and forces him into a dieback. Miscal now in trouble, and TNC only steps away from getting into that epicenter major. Life Stealer man fighting this right thing, but he's also man fighting a whole team behind him. And Armel is showing in the power of lightning. Miss Gao just cannot do anything, even with his double head. Finally, now, double open wounds as well. The good play completely heals and Lena. She even has a good fresh good but it does not That cheese and our Melvin saves it completely. That's and a look at Life Stealer forcing him to buy back. That's it. Life Stealer has buyback, but they call GG. Matter. They say grats and. TNC gets to go to the epicenter major, Gareth. Directly through from the group stage. They are our first winners. Of the regional SEA qualifiers and six and one, six and one. What a score, TNC, showcasing why they're still one of the top uh, organizations in the region. Fanatic cannot take your place. They you need a reorganization from the SEA. They dodged the three-way tie up at top spot because Boom ID, Fanatic, and TNC Predator could have theoretically gone three ways for first place, but TNC puts it out of contention. Make sure they get themselves to Moscow for that epicenter major. Admins just breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> we don't have to decide what to do with this. So we have one more.